cataractcoach.com dealing with adherent posterior capsule opacities. How much capsule polishing should we do? So here's the patient, and you can see at double speed here, this is a dense cataract. We're going to chop it up into many small pieces here, but it is dense. we got to use a lot of phaco power. The pre-op visual acuity for this patient was counting fingers at three feet. So less than 20 out of 800, not even on the eye chart. And so this is a very dense cataract, and we're going to make the vision a whole lot better by removing it. So we use our, our phaco chopper technique, buzzing with the probe, get the chopper around the piece and break them up and then emulsify them down. Notice how we're floating within the incision with the instruments here. We're using phaco power modulations as well to help minimize the total amount of ultrasonic energy in the eye. And there it is, chopping that dense nucleus in smaller and smaller pieces. That looks great. Here's another good chop, pow, bringing that piece to the tip and emulsifying it down. Now, if you end up using a lot of phaco power, it's okay to stop in the middle of nucleus removal and recoat the endothelium with more dispersive viscoelastic. In this case, though, we're pretty careful and we should be okay. After those are removed, we'll get that epinuclear shell out as well, and we'll finish up this case. So now when I take the, the IA probe and start to remove this lens cortex, look at the posterior capsule. We get that epinuclear shell out. That comes down relatively easy. We can use our second instrument here, or spatula, to help push that down the port of the IA. And now when we remove the cortex, you'll see there are areas of the capsule that are frankly stained or fibrotic from having that opaque, dense cataract in there for a long time. And if you think about it, what is the human lens? It's just protein, right? It's primarily protein. And these proteins get denatured or damaged with time. And so we can get some of these denatured or damaged proteins causing this fibrotic type tissue there on that posterior capsule. So you see that little bit of a fibrous plaque there, that linear streak. You know, I tried to remove it, and I don't want to damage the capsule. So remember, what's the delta? What's the before and after for this patient's vision? The before vision is counting fingers at three feet. With this IOL giving a Plano outcome for the patient, the post-op result is going to be 20-20 or close to it. That's an amazing outcome. And if there's a little bit of an opacity on that capsule, that's no problem. Remember, we can always do a YAG laser capsulotomy. So I'll try one more time to remove these opacities by going under the IOL optic with the IA probe, gently rubbing in that area, trying to get as much of that lens material off the posterior capsule, but it's just not going to come off. That's okay. We'll leave it. Now, even if you had a bigger central plaque right in the middle of the visual axis, there's no harm in leaving it. Waiting a month or two or three for the patient to heal up and the capsule to fully contract, and then doing a YAG laser capsulotomy, which is such an easy procedure, and it'll give you a beautiful outcome. So my advice in these patients with this fibrotic tissue stuck on the posterior capsule is first do no harm. Fix the cataract. That'll be such an amazing outcome, and you can always go back and do a YAG laser capsulotomy. Check out cataractcoach.com, our free teaching website. Click on the link. You can submit your video or click on that green link there and you can sign up for the free daily email. We'll send you a beautiful video like this every day to your inbox. And hey, it's free.